Let's go ahead and start with my favorite part, which is sewing. I went ahead and made the jacket using only one sewing pattern, which is McCall's M6989. It is a dress sewing pattern, but it's really, really easy to convert this pattern to be basically anything that you need. I just like using it for the bodice portion. I did include color blocking, which you can see here is really, really simple to do. I basically cut everything out as the pattern said, and then went ahead and cut off where I wanted the red parts to be before cutting out the red and then sewing it onto the black. For this project, I was using the Yaya Han basket weave fabric, which has a tendency to fray really badly. To make sure that this wouldn't happen to me and destroy my garment, I went ahead and encased all of the raw edges of this fabric in bias tape. Some people refer to this as Hong Kong seams. The skirt portion of this jacket was a three quarter circle skirt that I separated into four separate panels. For the red detailing along the bottom there, I just sewed some red bias tape on. And then I don't think that I have any footage of this in the video, but for all of the red symbols, I made stencils and then used fabric spray paint to make those look really cool. It turned out really, really awesome and the texture is still super visible. All of the belting for this costume was super duper easy to do. I used some really, really nice high quality upholstery vinyl and basically cut long strips of the desired width. For the shoulder harness piece, to get these patterns, I covered my mannequin in painter's tape and traced out the design that I wanted before taking it over to my two different colored vinyls and stitching those together for the finished product. To help these belting pieces look a lot more realistic, I went and took my sewing machine and did top stitching about a quarter inch away from the edges. I also went ahead and put eyelets into all of the belts. I made them about an inch apart so that way I could easily take in or let belts out as necessary. And then to weather, I just used my airbrush in brown and black airbrush paint. Super duper simple, and I just made sure that I really hit along those edges and anywhere that dirt might accumulate, including right by the eyelets. So now let's get into all the pieces that you're probably the most excited about, which is the armor. A lot of these armor pieces were actually sticking out a bit more from my body, so I didn't elect to use the painter's tape and plastic wrap method. Instead, what I would do is I would take the basic idea, the general shape, draw it onto paper, cut that out, and see if that would work. Usually paper mock-ups are the best, especially for things that are large, like gauntlets or shin armor, before taking it to foam because you don't want to waste your foam. I went through a whole lot of contact cement gluing all of this stuff together and definitely went through quite a bit of foam too. But if you want to save yourself some time and foam, I also offer patterns for all of these armor pieces through Patreon. Currently I'm working on the knee pieces. These are some of my favorite parts of the entire armor. I feel so silly saying that because it's knee armor and literally who cares about knee armor but me. And it's like not even visible because of the stupid skirt that I'm wearing. But I saw these and I instantly fell in love with them. I love the angularness and the design lines and it was just a lot of fun to put these together. For all of those perfectly round holes, by the way, I used large leather punches. For the sabatons, I did go ahead and use the plastic wrap and painter's tape method just because it's a lot easier to get something that perfectly matches the size and shape of the shoes that I'm wearing instead of trying to sit there and guesstimate with paper mock-ups and whatnot. 
The shoes consisted of a lot of pieces, as you can see. Every single one of those goes to the shoes, and I layered a whole bunch of stuff together to try and get a really, really cool, unique, layered look that fit the rest of the armor. It was hard finding good reference shots of the shoes in-game, even on my own character after getting the armor. It's just difficult to maneuver the camera in such a way that you're able to see it, so I did have to kind of fudge it a little bit, but I think it worked out well. Another piece of the armor that I really, really loved is this giant hip plate. I don't know why, but something about it is very charming and endearing, and it's just a wonderful little piece of armor. These pauldrons were some of the easiest pauldrons I've ever had to make. They were basically one-dimensional. I guess I should probably say two, because... They're flat, they're not a straight line. But regardless, it basically consisted of flat pieces of film that I glued together and heat shaped to just kind of curve a little bit around my shoulder. There were a lot of gems on this costume and I sculpted, molded, and cast every single one of them it was super duper fun to do this, although a little bit stressful. To dye all of my resin gems, I actually went ahead and used um, Artist's Ink. It's typically with the acrylic paint section in AC Moore or Michaels, and it was a tip that somebody on Instagram showed me. All of the lights in this costume, I definitely cheated a little bit, and I went ahead and used little fairy lights. To help make them a lot more vibrant, I went and put some nice reflective foil background behind them. It just was simple and I was tired of this build at this point and did not want to mess around with Arduinos again. Oh, and then all of the scales. There are over 450 scales, every single one of which I had to hand cast using Smooth On's Featherlight product. Big thank you to Yazbe who went ahead and 3D modeled the scales, and then thank you so much to Roja who printed these out for me. And then I took the 3D prints that he did for me and then finished them off and then molded and cast them. And after all of those were molded and cast though, I did have to put them on the tabard. Oh my gosh, my poor coworkers would laugh at me. They allowed me to bring this in and work on it at work. And every single day they'd be like, more scales? And I'd say, yeah, I'm almost done. Next day, more scales? I thought you said you were almost done. <laughs> yes, I did say that. Trust me, and I'm just as tired as you are. Also, clean your room while you craft. Clean your room while you craft. Clean your room while you craft. Woo! All right. Back to work. The carving knife was another really, really simple kind of little guy. I made him completely out of balsa wood and super glue and some wood glue to help finish him out and lacquer to make him nice and smooth. When I started painting this guy, I really wanted to go ahead and give it a really neat textured look, so I used a hammered metal silver spray paint on the main portion of the blade. For the beveled section, I went in with the lighter and brighter and smooth silver and did that all by hand. Let's move on to my big boy longsword. I love this guy so much. He is the Brazen Ridge from Monster Hunter World, obviously. Um, I know it's not the matching Zora armor sword, but this was the sword that I felt would look the best with the armor that I was making. To do this, I went ahead and did a three foam layer of 10 millimeter foam from TNT Cosplay Slurly around a PVC pipe. And then to get that bevel in, a friend of ours let me borrow his belt sander and it made the entire process so much quicker. The rest of the details were glued on with contact cement, 
and then the weird little lines were done by taking an X-Acto knife, cutting into the foam part way, and then opening those scores up with my heat gun. All of the mounds that are on the back part of this blade, I actually sculpted with Crayola Model Magic, believe it or not. Super duper lightweight and easy material, and it still holds up after all of these years of people using it for cosplay. Once the sword was finally finished being made, it was time to paint it. I did that by applying three thick coats of Plasti Dip and then putting down a gray and a brown base coat for the gold and the silver. After the base coats were applied, I went ahead and put on some nice silver and gold paint. For the beveled edge, I taped it off and then applied a lighter, brighter silver, much like I did to the dagger because it helped make everything look a lot more, I guess, realistic. And then I went ahead and weathered it using a mixture of my airbrush and watered down brown and black acrylic paint. Once I was done painting everything, I went ahead and wrapped my handle in bias tape. This is my favorite method to finish off handles, and basically you just wrap it, pull it really really tight, and then glue it all down with hot glue or super glue depending on the material. Because this was foam, I went ahead and used hot glue. And with that, my Zora Magdaros armor was done. This was an incredibly challenging build. It pushed me well past my boundaries and made me try new and exciting things. I really, really loved this build, and I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. And if you decide to make a Zora Magdaros armor of your own, please tag me because this is like one of the most beautiful designs in game, and I want more and more and more Zoras. Please and thanks. Massive shout out to all of my patrons for making this build possible. This build was almost entirely funded by you guys. Thank you so much. And an especially large shout out to Things Shall Get Loud Now, CJ Rose Cosplay, Nicole Wilson, and Robin Matthews.